Well, welcome to First United Methodist Church of Waynesville. <laughs> glad that you all are here. I'm glad that you all can be in worship with us today. Um, Mike shared a few announcements um, with you already, but um, I'm Becky Brown, associate pastor here, and um, would like to share um, a lots more things that are going on in our church today. Um, want you to know that this afternoon at four o'clock is the Festival of Carols, and uh, that'll be in the sanctuary. And um, if you've never been to one, they're always different, and they're always fun, and it really is an opportunity for our church members to come forward and to play their instruments, to share their gifts of music, and it's always different. Um, so this year, there's going to be wonderful carols. Um, the choir's going to be singing, the chamber choir, the youth bands playing, um, several soloists, flutes, lots of things. So please come at four o'clock in the sanctuary today. It'll be fantastic. Also, um, don't forget the service of remembrance that was moved. So it was snowed out last week, so it will be next Sunday at four o'clock in the sanctuary. So if you were looking um, to attend that, then that will be next week. Also, I uh, wanted to invite you to the cookie walk today. You might see these tables over here that are covered up with um, some cloth there. Um, our United Methodist women have been baking, and it was good because there was snow. If they had power, they spent most of the time baking. <laughs> so uh, they made some wonderful things um, to share. Um, so there's ways that you can pick up and purchase cookies. All the money goes to missions. Um, it's a great um, opportunity to pick up some goodies um, to give to someone that you know that might appreciate. Um, it's a little special gift from you um, or just to take home and enjoy with your family. So we hope that you'll do the cookie walk after our service today right here in the gym. Also, um, Christmas Eve is coming up and um, it'll be here really soon. Um, our kids are reminding us every day um, as we move our little elf to the next day in our little pocket advent calendar. Um, so we're getting close, and our Christmas Eve is, is great, and there's lots of opportunities to come and worship with us. Um, at 4 o'clock is our children's worship service. Um, it's led by children. Um, they do the readings. Um, they'll play a lot of the music. They'll sing. Um, it's a great participatory, loud worship service. It's wonderful. Um, so come and join us at 4 in the sanctuary on Christmas Eve. Um, it's it's a great time. And then at 5.30 to 6.30, there is an open communion time where the sanctuary will be open. It's a very quiet um, opportunity for you to come and receive communion. Um, there's the liturgy as will be said at 5.30. Um, and then you will receive communion as a family, and there will be some quiet music. So very different from four. So if you're looking for something that's quiet and con contemplative and um, just to soak in the spirit on Christmas Eve, that's your opportunity. Uh, 7 o'clock in the sanctuary is the big um, choir-led uh service that has communion with it as well. Um, so that's an, a great chance to sing Christmas carols like candles and have communion together. And then at 8.30 p.m. here in the gym will be our uh, more casual contemporary Christmas Eve service with the band with communion as well. Um, so lots of opportunities to come and worship together. So we hope that you'll join us on Christmas Eve. Let's see, what else is there? Oh, youth are caroling today at 5.30. Any information I need to say about youth caroling? Just show, here, show up here at 5.30? Yes. Matthew? All right. All right. <laughs> if you would like to Christmas carol, show up at 5.30 for that. It'll be great. Just visit a lot of our um, shut-ins here that are members of our church. Um, it's a great opportunity. It's always lots of fun. Um, so all, that's all the announcements that I have, Mike. Have you had anything else to share? Let's stand and greet one another with Christian love. Sing these words, oh come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant, oh come, ye oh come, ye to Bethlehem, and come and behold him, born the King of angels, oh come let Oh, 
words. Oh, come, let us adore him one more time. Oh, come, let us adore shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the goat, the newborn calf and the lion together, and a little child shall lead them. O God, surely we are wolves and lambs, we are leopards and goats, devouring lions and grazing cattle. We cannot make it on our own. Where is that little child? Today is the second Sunday of Advent, and we light two candles. There is now an other candle sharing the space. We ourselves are a broken people. We are broken into a bunch of others. We need the little child to lead us in the way of forgiveness and reconciliation. Though such healing may seem impossible, we know that nothing is impossible for you. We need but reach out and touch the hem of his swaddling blanket. Amen. 
this time for our children would come up front and join Miss Rachel. Hello, hello. Let me get my prop up here. I missed you all last week. I hope you had fun. I brought a picture of what I did in the snow. In fact, this picture was taken exactly a week ago on Sunday morning. You know those people? <laughs> Do you? That's me over here in the white scarf, and there's Annabelle and Kara. Yeah, and we took this picture together because the three of us actually live together. We're roommates. We live in the same house. Here's our house in the snow. I had to take a picture, and there's Annabelle and Kara in the picture of our house in the snow. It was exactly a week ago, and right after this picture was taken, guess what we did? We walked a mile and a half to Henry and Hardy's and Hudson's and Mr. Mike's house all the way. And, and they live up on a hill. If you've never been in their house, it is hard work in the snow. But we did it. And here's why. Because we wanted to be together. And we spent almost all day there on Sunday. And then the next day, Annabelle and Kara and I had some friends over and we hung out with our friends. And we had all this time, we had two whole days to spend together. And after those two days were over, um, it, it kind of felt like you feel after you take, after you wake up from a really good nap, you know, and you're like, oh, that was, that was great. You know, that's how it felt after we spent those two days with friends um, that mean a lot to us. And it reminded me of how important it is to make time to spend with the people that you love. We don't always make it a priority. Like our, your family, right? You go home and you eat dinner and you do your homework and then you go to bed. That's so normal for us to spend time with our family. But do we ever like make a plan and say, hey, we're gonna spend some quality time together. That's kind of how we are as roommates, me and Karen Annabelle. Yeah, we live in the same house, but it's really hard for us to say, we are going to set aside this time to be together. And yet yeah, that's what God calls us to be, to be there for one another. He made us to be together. That's why we have this building here, so that we can gather and be together. During this time of Advent, it feels like that. It fills our heart, doesn't it? During this time of Advent, it's so important that we make time to be together. Remember those booklets? Some of you might have those Advent booklets that you can do together with your family. You can play a game together. There are all kinds of ways that you can plan to spend special time with your family, right? So let's pray together. Will you pray with me? And let's thank God for all of the people that he's put in our lives, for all of the love that he's given us. And let's ask him to help us remember how important it is to be together. God, we thank you for all of the love that you've put here in our lives, for the love from, that comes straight from you, for the love from <coughs> friends, for the love that we get from our family, for the love that we get from our church. And we pray that you help us to see that and to see how, to see how important it is that, that we don't take that for granted. We pray that you help us recognize time that we can spend with each other and make it meaningful. In your name we pray. Amen. As our children return to their seats, we'll ask our ushers to come down as we give our gifts back. Jesus born to set thy people free from our sins and fears release us let us find our rest in thee Israel strength and consolation hope of all the earth thou art dear desire of every nation joy
Joy to those who long to see the day spring from on high up here. Come now, promise rod of Jesse, of thy birth we long to hear. O'er the hills the angels singing news, glad tidings of a birth. Go to him, your praises bringing Christ the Lord has come to earth. Come to earth to taste our sadness, he whose glories knew no end. By his life he brings us gladness, our Redeemer, Shepherd, Friend. Leaving riches without number, born within a cattle stall. people to deliver born a child and yet a king born to reign in us forever now thy gracious kingdom bring by thine own eternal spirit rule in all our hearts alone by thy and merit raise us to thy glorious throne come the long expected jesus born to set thy people free let's pray together holy god we give you thanks for the ways in which you surprise us by your grace and surprise us by your love. We thank you for the snow that's happened, for those times in which the weather causes us to slow down in the midst of such busy seasons, to slow down and to spend time with those who are in our households, to the opportunity to help our neighbors when they are in need and the chance to really just be together with no excuse and no need to get out and take care of business. We thank you also for this season as we anticipate the coming of Jesus in just over a week. We thank you for a worship service full of people who have come together to open our hearts, to hear the promises, to hear the prophecies once again, to continue to prepare our hearts to receive you. We always thank you for the hope that you bring, that even in such darkness, when we feel the, tar the darkness, your light is always brighter and always shines. We thank you for the wonderful love that you show, the way in which you forgive us and the way in which you love us just where we are, and you love us through the most difficult times and you love us through the most exciting and wonderful times, that you don't ever change that your love is steadfast. We pray this morning for the concerns we've mentioned, for those who are struggling during this season of Advent, approaching Christmas, for those who are losing loved ones, who are concerned for the health of the ones they care about so deeply, and for those that are grieving losses that are ever so real, even if they're losses that have happened years ago. We pray that you would comfort them and provide them a space to lift them up, to honor their lives, to remember their wonderful things that, that you have given, the memories that you have given us to keep with us always. 
We pray for the church members that we've mentioned today, for Laura Ann Humphreys and her husband, Bill, as she is at the hospice center today. We pray for Lillian Allen as she goes into surgery tomorrow, and for Kathy Claycamp and for Brenda and for all the others that we have mentioned today and those that we've not shared in this such a big group. For we know that there are many ways in which we can praise you, and there are many ways in which we can come and kneel at your feet laying our burdens, giving them over to you, hoping that you would give us that peace that you promised to give us. We give you thanks for this prayer time today. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Thanks, Becky. Good morning. My name is Keith, and I am the senior pastor and excited to be together with you today, especially since we had a a week off. I hope everybody enjoyed the snow. But I missed you guys. I want to read our gospel lesson from uh, Luke chapter 1. It's one of the stories that we read in Advent. Um, you know, we, we not only learn about the coming and the birth of Jesus, but there's also attention given to uh, the coming and the birth of John, John the Baptist. And um, Zechariah is a priest, and he's... Um, John the Baptist's dad, and you can read the whole story in, in Luke chapter 1 about how he's on duty as a priest, and God appears to him in an angel and promises that he'll have a son, and, um, and that all happens. And so uh, this is Zechariah's prophecy over his son John. Luke chapter 1, beginning with verse 67. Then his father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke this prophecy. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably on his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty Savior for us in the house of his servant David. As he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that would be saved, that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Thus he has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and has remembered his holy covenant the oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins, by the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. The child grew and became strong in spirit, and he was in the wilderness until the day he appeared publicly to Israel. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. So our family had been at the, the beach for a couple of days. I think it was a Tuesday. And so we were all settled, we were all settled into the, to the house. Uh, we always love the excitement of renting a different house uh, for our week at the beach. And uh, there's this, the whole group is standing on the porch. Somebody has the key, and, and they're unlocking the door, and they can't unlock it fast enough because we're waiting to just burst in through the doorway and dis discover uh, this house that will be our home for the next week. And then what follows is, you know, just like, usually it's like, wow, what an awesome place. And then, then you got to figure out who's going to sleep where, whose room is this or that. And, you know, in those days, mom and dad shared the brunt of the, the finances, so they always got the best room. And, you know, but the seven adults, there were 13 of us, the seven adults got bedrooms and uh, the six kids got to fight for the couch or their space for uh, the sleeping bag on the floor. And so on Tuesday, we were all settled into the house when we heard a knock at the door. And it was a surprise. It was Mark and Lisa. And they're three really small kids. <laughs> they had been in Virginia, and they were on their way back home to Fort Lauderdale, and they just decided they would stop in to say hi. It was great. Well, I couldn't believe it when my dad was like, well, y'all should just stay with us. <laughs> he invited them to stay with us. And then I really couldn't believe it when they were like, okay, awesome. 
you know, so they're going out back to their car and they're bringing their luggage in. And I, you know, I didn't say anything to Chan, but I just kind of looked at her with those eyes like, you know, where are we all going to sleep? Did I say that they had three small children? Well, in the season of Advent, the scriptures that are, that are chosen, uh, oftentimes they're, they're the prophecies, like this one from Malachi. And Malachi says there is a messenger coming. And the Lord that you seek will come. Um, Suddenly will appear in the temple. I I, I like, you know, the way Malachi says it. He says, this messenger of the covenant in whom you delight (laughs) uh, will will come. And then what Malachi does is he, he kind of pushes out these readiness questions, like, are we really prepared for this day that's coming? And, and he, he says as much, uh, you know, who will endure that day? When that day comes, who will be able to, to stand? Zechariah, in, in his prophecy, uh, talks about his son John, and uh, John was to prepare the people, you know, Uh, And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins, by the tender mercy of our God. Uh, Dawn from on high will break upon us, and and we won't have to sit in darkness anymore. If if you continue reading uh, Luke's story with all of this, he tells us about John, and that when John grew up, um, that he was... uh, going around all the region of the Jordan, and, and he was proclaiming repentance and forgiveness of sins. Uh, that, that was his message. Malachi, um, he talks about the refiner's fire and, and the fuller's soap. Kind of in answer to this question of, am I going to be able to stand? Am I going to be prepared? Am I going to be ready? You know, that we've got to be refined, that, that we've got to be, be purified. And then what grabbed me as I was, as I was living with, with this scripture was the word until, um, that we're, we're to be refined by the fire and, and that we're to be purified by the soap um, until, which speaks to a process, which actually gives me lots of hope <laughs> that my becoming refined and my becoming pure and my becoming all that God wants me to become um, is a process. Um, but it also tells me that God has expectations. That God expects something special from me. And, and in this case, as, as Malachi um, you know, talks about it, um, it's until the offering is, is pleasing. You know, so that the offering of my life is one that's offered with righteousness, that, which just means all that's good and right, and beautiful, um, that the offering of my life is, is pleasing to God. You know, so there is, in these scriptures that are chosen for the Advent season, especially in the early weeks, uh, there, there's talk of like this, this judgment day, this, this day that's coming. And I don't know, the, those texts, I don't know if you're like me, they, they, a lot of times they just feel kind of ominous, you know, that there's, sometimes there's, there's violent language in there. I think there's even in one place where Jesus is talking about this day that's coming, and and he says, the moon will be turned to blood. And I'm like, the moon will be turned to blood. Yikes. Um, well, in verse 5 of Malachi 3, um, he, he talks about this messenger who's coming and the judgment that will come with it. It is a judgment day. Uh, he says, then I will draw near to you for, for judgment. I will be swift to bear witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, against those who swear falsely against those who oppress the hired workers and their wages, the widow and the orphan, against those who thrust aside the alien. And do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. So I I don't know. I I guess that none of us necessarily would would associate with the judgment that's going to come on sorcerers and wizards. (laughs) Uh, but it might not be too hard to find ourselves uh, somewhere in that other stuff. You know, Judgment Day isn't always a bad day. 
There are a lot of people who leave the courtroom with millions of dollars. There are a lot of people who leave the courtroom with their freedom. Uh, Judgment Day can be a beautiful day, and I would argue that Judgment Day is not just that day that's way out there, that day that's uh, the end of of all days. Uh, Judgment Day comes uh, today, really. There's, There's a quote from John Wesley, and we shared it two weeks ago where he talks about the, the main doctrines of our faith um, being repentance, faith, and, and holiness. And he describes uh, repentance as the, the porch of religion and that holiness is, is the door of, of religion and, and that the third one, uh, or no, excuse me, faith, faith is the door of religion and then the holiness is, is actually religion itself. So I was thinking about my door. In my house, you know, I, I don't just let anyone through my doorway and into my kitchen. My wife, Chan, tells a story of a time when she was, she was home alone, um, living out in the country, and um, she was taking a nap on the couch, and, the, and um, there was a knock on the door, and it, and it woke her up, and she could tell from, the, you know, the, from her vantage point, the, the glass on the side of the door, that it was the drunk guy that we see oftentimes walking, walking down the road. And so it, it scared her, and, and so she was able to kind of uh, sneak unseen and hide and, and wait until he went away. And I was actually really glad she didn't open the door, you know. There, there's a picture. One of the things that we did is, uh, for our Sunday evening, last Sunday evening, for a few hours, was work on this book. We're making a book with... Uh, through Snapfish for a Christmas present for our kids. And so we're scanning like this. we got this box of old pictures, you know, that we're scanning in uh, so that we can do this. And so we just sat on the couch by the fire and, and we're looking at these pictures of our kids when they were little. And uh, there's one where um, after this really big rain when we lived in the Winston-Salem area, um, we, we just turned the kids loose in, in the mud. And so they played in the mud. I mean, it was like a, an all-out mud fight, you know, I, I think that the thing finally ended when they started getting in their eyes, you know. But um, so we got these pictures of them uh, at this mud fight. They're covered from from head to foot, like there's you can see the whites of their eyes, and that's that's it. Uh, they were not allowed to go through the door and into the house, you know, until they got hosed down really good uh, out in the yard. I I went to Silver Webster High School before when it was it was before it Smoky Mountain. It was Silver Webster High School over in Silva, and uh, U.S. history was my first class of the day, and I sat beside this guy, and I really liked him, uh, and, and he, he was a farmer. His dad, his dad farmed something. I, I, I think it was, I don't remember what the animal was, but it was pigs or something like that. And I remember always, you know, kind of being jealous that before school started, he got to go and do farming stuff, you know, and help his dad on the farm and milk something, and um, so one day, he comes in like right as, right as the bell is ringing and, and kind of quickly gets into his seat. And it wasn't long until I started smelling something, you know. <laughs> and I looked over, and his boots were just covered with what looked like mud, but it wasn't mud. It was whatever animal that his daddy farms, you know. And I thought, uh, they shouldn't have let him through the door. One of, my, one of my favorite quotes, and I know I've probably said this, shared this before, and I'm pretty certain I'll share it again. Um, and I, have, I have no idea who, who said this first. It's not okay to stay where you are. It's just okay to be there. It's not okay to stay where you are. It's just okay to be there. And it's important for us to know that God opens the door for all of us. But it's not anything goes. God expects something special from me, from all of us. And so a lot happens in the doorway. The doorway is a, is a place uh, of decision, and it's, and it's a place of desire, I think. Uh, my repentance, this thing that both John and Malachi call us to in the season of Advent, it reveals my heart in the matter. So I'm left with a couple of questions today, which is a judgment day. It's a good day. But I ask myself, what is it in my life that needs 
to be touched by this refiner's fire? What needs to be burned away? What is it in my life that, that needs to be a little more pure? And then I think about what's God's heart in the matter. It speaks volumes to me that God even wants to come over into our mess. But God does. God comes. There's, there's a, a story that's told in Spain of this father and his teenage son. And their re- relationship wasn't going very good. The relationship was strained. And so the teenage son runs away. His father, however, began a, a journey in, in search of him. And uh, finally, in, in Madrid, in this last desperate effort to find his son, he decides to put out an ad in the newspaper. And the ad read, Dear Paco, meet me in front of the newspaper office at noon. All is forgiven. I love you, your father. The next day at noon, in front of the newspaper office, 800 Pacos showed up. (laughs) All of them seeking forgiveness and love from their fathers. Just after the judgment verse in Malachi, verse 6, God says, For I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore, you, O children of Jacob, have not perished. Ever since the days of your ancestors, you have turned aside from my statutes and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you say, how shall we return? There's a a verse in Revelation. Um, John the Apostles has this vision, and he's recording all this, and... um, There's a section early on in Revelation where there are these letters to the seven churches where Jesus is speaking. So if you have a Bible that tells you when Jesus is speaking by putting red letters, using red ink, this is um, red letter stuff. Revelation 3.20 says, listen, I am standing at the door. This is Jesus speaking. Listen, I am standing at the door knocking. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to you. And eat with you, and you with me. And so we're given this vision of Jesus in the doorway. And when I think about this question, how shall I return? Uh, Well, I I open the door. Uh, Mark and Lisa and the kids uh, stayed with us for a couple days. We let them in because Mark is my cousin. He's my dad's sister's boy. Well, really, we let them in because we love them. And we were prepared for them, even though it was a surprise. We had plenty of food, and none of us mind sleeping on the floor. And you know, the time that we had together are among our favorite memories. I I think sometimes that we're afraid to come into God's house. But I also believe that, that deep down, we, we all want to be home for Christmas. So, I love the season of Advent. Because it reminds me that the one in whom I delight is coming. Will you pray with me? Oh God, we're thankful for the gift that today is. And that we have chosen to gather in this place. I pray that your spirit would hold us. And that you would remind us that you don't change. That your love for us runs deep. And that your mercy is very tender. And I pray, God, that you would help us. When we find ourselves in the doorway. We ask this in the name of Christ who is and who is coming. Amen. Would you please stand for our final song?
you broke my chains of sin and shame and covered me with grace. You mend my life, you holy fire, and you covered me with grace. You are the hand that reaches out. Jesus 
Zechariah said, and you child will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people for the forgiveness of their sins. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us, to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Thank you for coming today. I pray that God will bless you and that we will all go in the peace of Christ. Amen.